This is JB McConville, aka J Business. I don't have any allegiance, I'm just looking for the money. You're listening to the DU Football Show. Apparently, there's 12 clubs that are looking for the money, too, Sam. <laughs> yeah, there definitely are 12 clubs they, looking for the money. They are all about the business, right? Now, I usually don't talk about my beer till injury time, but today I'm drinking Interstellar Fog because that's what the fuck I feel like I'm in. Let's start the show. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Great day, yay, the fucking Gooner Graham. Stuff of a lord, but straight and short. Sam Graham, hey. Sam Graham. Fucking United! Fucking United! Hello and welcome to the Drunken United Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. And from next season on, the Super League. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not a fucking <laughs> chance. Um, I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me is a guy with a few thoughts. Oh, I got Samuel some, Graham. I got some shit to say. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? But, this would be like Peter Griffin. You know what really grinds my gears? But but you know what? Yeah, boys and girls, you're waiting for it. Because you know what we're going to do first? We're going to talk about the fucking Premier League. That's what we're going to do right, first Right, football foremost. first, fans first, shit that matters. Yeah. And then the fucking D-backs of the year oh, afterwards. Yeah. Big time. Big we're, time. We're recording at Studio H just outside the nation's capital. You can check us out on all podcast platforms. Be sure to rate, subscribe, review, and share with a footballing friend. Should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Grammy, tell the people how they can get in touch. Sure. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us on email, it is dfootballshow at gmail.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us on the internet, it is at say no to Super League. Uh, <laughs> so, it's at dfootballshow on uh, all of your social medias. Um, and again, we check our DMs. Make sure you reach out to us. We love chatting everybody uh, because fans are the lifeblood of football. And if you're new to the show, we definitely want to hear from you. Please, um, please, please. Our friends who have been drinking bourbon recommendations from us, we want to hear from you again. About and how they went yeah, as well, everything. what you thought about them. If you, if you uh, thought that we described those bourbons well and uh, you, you got the same thing out of it, if you picked up something that we didn't pick up on. We want to hear about it. We think it'd be awesome to uh, to talk about booze a little bit more as well. Yeah, we're a uh, little behind the curtain. In the summertime, we are going to do a big mega show of us reviewing the uh, top twenty list as a whole and talking about it and discussing it. Be a nice uh, way to revisit it as well. Yeah, and uh, it'll be its own separate one off. Uh, as we won't be doing as many shows as we've always been doing over the summer, we're actually gonna. Relax a little, which after three years, we fucking need it. No shit. <laughs> Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So as the red-blooded Americans are, we are. We have vowed to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. Sammy, what are we drinking? Uh, we are drinking Grey Whale Gin today as we take the next step in our gin binge <laughs> journey. Uh, mm. This is one that I sell, actually. Uh, it comes from the William Deutsch portfolio. Um, it should be about thirty four ninety nine on the shelf when you see it out there. Maybe a little higher than that, thirty seven ninety nine, kind of max price. Um, it is made from six Californian botanicals. Uh, juniper comes from Big Sur. Limes from Temecula. Uh, fir tree from Sonoma. Sea kelp from the Mendocino Coast. Mint from Santa Cruz. And almonds from the Central Valley. The almonds contribute to that nice creamy mouthfeel uh, that you get from the spirit. Uh, the, it's not overly junipery, overly mm. Christmas tree e, if you will, despite having fir tree and juniper in it. Um, I, the sea kelp, you don't really get when you drink the gin neat, um, but since you added this Mediterranean tonic to it, I mm. do kind of get a little bit of that salt stand out uh, in, on the front end there. Uh, the citrus is the star in this guy yeah, all big the time. way. You know, the, like I said, that sea kelp uh, salt is prevalent now to the front um of to the to the front tasting palette of it but the fever tree tonic uh the mediterranean tonic that is 
with rosemary and uh, Sicilian lemons is what they do for um, the... That's what makes it, quote, a Mediterranean-style tonic. I know um, I tried it earlier. Yeah. I just want to try it again. Oh, it's a, it's an exceptional gin. I've been... Uh, it's I know very, this is... very good. Husband and wife team <laughs> that own it uh, mm-hmm. and 50-50 partnership with Deutsch. They're also part of the 1%. Um, so that is... One percent of their sales goes towards some sort of helping the planet charity. Mm-hmm. They have chosen Oceana, uh, which is a whale conservation and ocean health charity, mm-hmm. like cleaning up the ocean, making sure the whales are safe, that kind of stuff. Well, it's it's this is one you had told me you had picked up a while ago, and it sounded interesting. I hadn't had a chance to try it yet, and I've been anxiously awaiting the uh, opportunity to try this gin. It is. Fantastic! I love it. And I, I really like the uh, kind of California seafoam color bottle as well. Very non-traditional for gin. So it's very easily stands out on the shelf. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool uh, as well. A big whale tail on the front. And in the whale tail, if you'll notice, is the Californian coastline. Oh, very cool. Yep. Well, 86 for- proof, by the way. Didn't mention that. 43% by volume. Well, for me... Please drink responsibly. For me, this is the uh, first gin and tonic of the year, so I'm very happy. There you go. Do you want to clink as well, Sam? I mean, I guess. She's been... Last six weeks in a row, she's done it herself. So, I... <laughs> was disappointing. No, no, we did not uh, no, want no, to no. clink. No, no, it was disappointing, Sam. I blame you. You did not come into that clink with the positive vibe and energy that was that necessary. Was a one-sided glass clink. Dare I say you came in very greedy Super League-like. I mean, that's just how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> the race for survival has just claimed its first victim. Newcastle 3, West Ham 2, Wolverhampton 1, Sheffield United 0, Arsenal 1, Fulham 1. Uh, uh, first and foremost... That's Super League result right there, in it? That Newcastle-West Ham match was fan-fucking-tastic. What a great watch that was. Excellent game. Uh, oh, it was a great game. ASM in from the start, obviously, Alan St. Maximum, which makes a massive, massive difference to them, him being yeah. pretty much their only outlet. Uh, but it also frees up Miguel Amaron to uh, to be one on one with people mm-hmm. uh, as well, um, and they exploited a lot of space. It was it was a fun watch. Um, now, obviously, the red cart to Michael Dawson didn't help. No, of uh, or not. Craig Dawson. I mean, Michael Dawson. He's long <laughs> retired, and he was a Tottenham player, not a West Ham player. Heard. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> Craig Dawson um, getting his uh, getting his second yellow in the build up to the first goal. Um, so that obviously did not help anything but but, but then, West Ham fought back I was gonna say the second half was all West Ham yeah. because Newcastle and Bruce were like oh let's fuck this off like they just completely fell back nobody was doing anything and West Ham completely took the game to it and when West Ham finally tied it up it was deserved in fact the fact that Newcastle scored fairly quickly after the fact just kind of felt like damn really like felt like West Ham really kind of deserved the point or maybe even three there. Yeah. You know, it just a D up with the finish of the season. (laughs) Mm, Oh my God. Yes. Fucking very pretty. Uh, uh, two touch, uh, quick little two step around Fabianski. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. It's in your own net mate. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) Idiot. (laughs) Uh, but then redeeming himself obviously with a wonderful header, uh, to, to equalize, uh, later on. Yeah. Um, it was a good game. It was it was surprisingly a good game. I thought Newcastle. I thought we're gonna. Bo- I thought Newcastle were gonna bottle it. Essentially, if you can call it bottling it, when West Ham are playing the way they're playing, yeah. and I think there's still so many positives to take from the performance, being down to ten men, fighting back in the way they did, and being a little disappointed to not get the three points. Um, I think there's a lot of positives to take from it that. Uh, uh, that will spurn them forward, and losing to Newcastle, quote unquote, won't dominate these headlines. Well, and also for them, no one gained any points this weekend. Like Everton got a point, Tottenham got a point, Liverpool, Liverpool got, got a, a point. point. Yeah, Chelsea didn't play, so you're still sitting where you need to be. You're okay. It it, it didn't kill you. You're all right. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> um, the amount of goals West Ham is giving up has got to start to become concerning because it's now like every week they're giving up three goals. Yeah, last well, four out three, three or two, or but they're yeah they're just giving up a ton of fucking goals. Yep. Now they're finding results in most of them. I think this is the first time that there was a loss at the end of one of those results. But I think that's right. <laughs> but they're just giving up too many 
They're giving up way, way, way too many goals right now, especially uncharacteristic of a David Moyes team. Correct. Like, that is well, not. It's uncharacteristic for his teams to be scoring this many goals conversely. Very true. Very and true. The more you come out, the more gaps you leave at the back. Um, now, here's the difference. Mm-hmm. David Moyes looks at the personnel he has and says, what can we do with this personnel, right? An attack seems to be one of the better things, especially since Lingard's coming to the side. Right. This is, conversely, what the problem at Tottenham was with Jose, right. which we'll come on to. Right. All of that attacking talent, don't care, this is my system. Right. Fuck what you want to do, we're going to play defense only, and look where the two teams are. Yeah, it's true. David Moyes adapted to his players, and it's working. Yeah. Jose it is, it is refused working. to. And it doesn't work. Uh, I mean, look at that front line. Gareth Bale, Lucas Moore, Harry Kane, so, uh, Human Son. You There's have, so many goals in that team. You have the leading goal scorer, leading assist getter, by the way, same fucking person, who's probably going to win player of the fucking year. And you're probably going to lose them. Yeah. Like, but we'll get to them. Here's the thing for you. So, it's clear. You said... St. Max is on. St. Max fixes everything, right? Mm-hmm. Clearly fixes everything. So what you should be doing in this offseason is making sure he is signed to an extension and you fire fucking Bruce. The problem is Mike Ashley is going to do the exact opposite. He's going to sell St. Max and give an extension to fucking Bruce, right? That's, that's what's going to happen, right? Yeah, I actually think that you're going to see Newcastle, given the announcement that we'll talk about later, I think a lot of steam is going to, made to be made to sell them. Yeah. As yeah. quickly as possible. The, that and hire while Jose. The, while they still have value. Yeah, and that and hire Jose. <laughs> yeah, that, that wouldn't be, that be brilliant? Just, Jose working for Mike Ashley for a little bit? Uh, Sign me up. <laughs> Put that straight in my veins. <laughs> right right next to that vein that has yes. Marcelo Bielsa going right into it. <laughs> Jose and Mike Ashley. That's like a fucking speedball, that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Bielsa is like the cocaine. Jose is the heroin. I'm in. Fucking nah. sign me up. I, I was I was gonna reference it more as like a uh, joint laced with angel dust. You don't know if you're coming <laughs> yeah. or going, right? Like it's like, wait, I'm smoking weed. It's supposed to be called. Whoa, oh, it's angel <laughs> dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, the weeds there at that point for flavoring. So with that <laughs> happening, the blades had to win. Had to win to stay in the league. Lose one nothing. Well, they tried. The, they Blades tried. Are the first victims. They're just not very good. No. No, they not tried. At all. They're just not very good. Willie and Jose getting his first goal mm-hmm. uh, for Wolves. I thought Wolves played actually within themselves a bit, um, which this season they haven't done. They've tried to do too much without Raul Jimenez, and I think that's left openings at the back. They, you know, with Raul, they got enough points to be safe obviously very early on without Raul they went on a bit of a slide and then it became evidently clear that they weren't going to be able to push into Europe they had already garnered enough points to not be relegated or worry about being relegated yeah and so them before anyone else this season they were on the beaches of Dubai you know what I mean mentally it's just like what can we do now but it's funny because they've been playing well lately they've been getting oh, results. Last, last few games yeah, yeah like last the few last weeks. three they've been they're, they're getting results so for a Wolves fan you gotta be kind of pleased like okay for a throwaway season we're at least winning games yeah you know hell I mean they can quietly sneak into the top 10 yep with nobody noticing if the right teams around them lose suddenly be in 10th mm-hmm. and 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 you look at that and you go, considering everything, we lost our leading goal scorer. Like, eh, we got to work well, with some young kids. We're okay. They're like, going to have to. Worse. They're going to have to break in Fabio Silva, <laughs> and they're going to have to break in William Jose properly. Yeah. Um, because when Raul Jimenez does come back, I'm sure at the beginning he'll be first name on the team sheet again, kind of thing. You know, yeah, or at least they'll want him to be. But will he be the same player? We saw Petr Cech, after his very similar injury, had to wear a helmet the rest of his career. And for Do, and for a forward, you're out heading the ball frequently. Yeah. Do you In especially fact, constantly? Him. Yeah. It's not even. It's not even everybody thinks head balls at goal. No, you are typically Flicks. flicking on yep. headers constantly. 
bringing down the ball with your back to a oncoming defender, mm -hmm. which means you're getting knocked in the back, which then the first thing you're going to think is, fuck my head. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how he responds to all of that. Right. So will he be able to respond to it, or will he? A lot of players. Eduardo uh, uh, was never the same. You remember the old Arsenal forward, the mm -hmm. um, Croatian international, Brazilian born who uh, got his leg broken by Ryan Sharcross mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, at Stoke for yeah. Arsenal. He was a shell of himself when he came back from that injury. Every yeah. turn, you could see, took an extra second. It flinched, you know? And for Raul Jimenez, that ball comes over the top from a fucking Ardama Traore rifled cross. Mm. Does he put his head onto it? Um, or does he shy away from it? And, and no fault to him. I'm not making fun of him. No, but he... it's a serious concern. Well, it's like, will he be able to handle that? <laughs> well, you you also it's you know like, you know Andres Gomez hasn't been the same since he put Son in the situation that Son had to hurt him, and <laughs> the world has felt very sorry for 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 Son since, and and Andre hasn't been able to really cope with that on the pitch. You can tell it it, it happens. You know, it does happen. I but, love the fact that you're holding this grudge from for, uh, almost a year now. Yeah. Do you want to fly to England and hug him? Yeah, but I mean, uh, oh, Andres, if he does another one of his hug sessions, yeah, sign me up. That was what he did his first year with the club. He did a hug Andre for a charity thing. Like, and it just people lined up to just for get a up. No, for a charity thing. So it's lined with 16-year-old female supporters and their moms. <laughs> and then fucking Sam. Um, and then Sam. That sounds about right. Uh beautiful man he is still yeah. Graham, Graham and if and if we were both over there together for 20 quid would would, would you hug Andres yeah I'd rub beards <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a beautiful man man <laughs> just it's a beautiful man get one of those I'd want to get one of those pictures of me holding him in a loving embrace like I do when I'm drunk stroking <laughs> yeah. his face stroking his hair yes. oh, god it'd be beautiful so for Sheffield I mean I, I said I was done talking about him so you're out of the league I'm done talking about you Come, Coming back come, up is Norwich. <clears throat> yeah, already they got guaranteed. All of the topics correct. Yes, they did. <laughs> this season. Yes, they did. That's pretty early for a team to have already secured promotion. And they're pretty close to winning it, too. They're yeah, have very to be. close to they're winning it. They're that far as well. ahead. They have to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it uh, looks like Watford's very close to being securing second place as well. So that's right around that, very close to happening, also. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't wait for those cunts to be back. <laughs> More fat Drake. <laughs> Woo! Shoot me. All right. So, final one. You know what? Sign them up for the Super League. Hmm. They could fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be perfect. Um. Well, they do have they do have that money. They own multiple clubs. So yeah, go ahead. Them and Genoa go <laughs> up together. Let there be the conflict of interest in the Super League. That'll be great. Um. Time's running out on Fulham. It's it's just that simple now. Um. This was a very funny game because Arsenal dominated the entire thing throughout. Mm -hmm. uh, they only gave up a handful of chances, and they were pretty weak chances at that. Yeah. Um, it was a tale of two toes was yeah. this game. Obviously, Bakuya Saka, uh, uh, Bakuyo Saka, sorry, having the defender between him and the goal, literally, on his back, uh, but his toe was mm -hmm. offside, apparently, in the way he was standing. So despite having the entirety of the defender behind him and his back against the defender's chest, mm -hmm. still ruled it offside. Yeah. Game's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Game's gone. Well, I was I, I had this actually listed as a question because also now I know you're to the not, letter of the law, yes. Right. But no linesman is gonna flag for that. Well but what I what my question is is this, because it also gonna bring up the goal that you guys scored at the end as well, is the offsides rule getting out of hand? Because here's my opinion. Now I know you're going to say he didn't affect the play, he right? Didn't. Okay. Then if I'm um, if by what they've done so far with VAR, if the year before Gilpie Sigurdsson affected the play against Manchester United, I agreed with you then. Rob he Holding didn't. affected the play here. If, I agreed with going, you, but I agreed with you then. They oh, got yeah. your call wrong. <clears throat> they got my call correct. Right. So for for me, you're I the one that got it, fucked out of that. Right. Don't so, try to take my goal away. <laughs> so, but what I'm trying to say is, is it feels like offsides is broken, and VAR has made it only worse. No, they people are overthinking it to begin with. Right. Your shit was called incorrectly. Period. Yeah. They fucked yours up. The Rob Holden call was the correct call, in my opinion. 
uh, Bakuyo Saka, the offside, was called incorrectly as well. Right. What advantage is he gaining? You know, it was yeah, maybe a stud was offside, but his literally the defender's body was behind him. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. If anything, the way he was standing hindered his progress to goal. Mm. <laughs> he made it harder on himself. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> And they took away the best bit, a beautiful goal. A great piece of skill from Saka to trap it, play it out to Bellerin, cool, calm, composed, and then Bellerin with a <laughs> dink of a cross, just beautifully uh, floated up there, and a wonderfully attacked header by Danny Ceballos that sent Areola flapping into the post. Yeah, It was beautiful. And we it doesn't count now because of a stud? Fuck off. I think when everybody... One of many things that could fuck off from this weekend. I think when everybody <laughs> thought of VAR, it's going to catch the guy that was a foot off sides that wasn't getting called before. And while, yes, that is happening, it's more about, like, a person's elbow being off and a toe being off every right. single it's time. The, it's That's this, all it's It's this become. armpit. It's the, it, the <clears throat> toe. Uh, Mo Salah's shoelace or his floppy hair. I, I guarantee that's why Mo cut his hair. Yeah. After the last English lockdown was over, <laughs> I guarantee that's why he cut his hair. Because he, it, it, it's just it's ridiculous. The game's gone. Um, can can Fulham pull themselves out of this? Mm-mm. I'm starting to agree. You got me right when I was drinking. Yeah. No, Sorry, I, uh, it's fine. It's fine. That's I should have noticed that as a host and uh, worked with you <laughs> as a partner. You know, I should have done better. My apologies, my friend. My apologies. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Rounding out the rest of the league, and oh, so that happened. Everton 2, Spurs 2, Man U 3, Burnley 1, Liverpool 1, Leeds 1. All right, we'll get to it, okay? The the rager that's inside of you, we'll, we'll get to it in a second, okay? Mm-hmm. First, we're actually going to talk about the game. Um, Everton completely dominate, completely own the control of the game, Two mistakes by the center backs Holgate and Keane lead to two goals for Harry Kane where he's wide open to put him in the back of the fucking net. Yeah, only one team played this game, and then Harry Kane scored twice. Yeah. That's all that happened. You all were on top throughout. Richarlison should have done better. Godfrey should have uh, should have done better. This was a, a vintage Gilfie performance, and I think uh, Hamas had a chance that he should have done better with as well. This could have been 5 nothing. Yeah, easy. Yeah, I mean it's it's really that simple. It it's, was it was a very straightforward game, the way in which Jose played, which is why. Uh-huh. Well, hold on, hold on. All right. The other big thing is uh, one Mr. Kane leaves the pitch hurt, yep. and what I want us to be concerned about here is is Ben Godfrey. How is Ben doing? Because Ben's a really nice guy. I mean, he's really likable. And he's really been taken into the club so far here at Everton. We really, we've really embraced him. <laughs> is Ben going to be okay, knowing that he might have fucked up all of all of England's chances at Europe? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just want to know the chances <laughs> at the Euros because you hurt Harry Kane. But he's such a nice guy, Ben Godfrey. Dare I say, inspiration for the children, Sam? No. Because did you look over at Son's face as Harry Kane was exiting the pitch? How sad he looked <laughs> to have lost his partner. <laughs> ben Godfrey is the fucking uh, devil because, because he hurt Son's feelings oh, and damaged England's hopes. And by hurting Son's feelings, you hurt the children's feelings. <laughs> exactly. Sam, the, exactly. The children. None of that matters. Jose's fired. None of that yes. matters. <laughs> three. Three clubs I managed. Uh, three clubs in uh, England. Uh, three. Three, three championship, <laughs> four fire, four times respect. Um, he's trying to he's trying to emulate his boy Big Sam, you know. He's well, trying to get fired a bunch now yeah. too. Uh, and Neil Warnock, he says he admires. He sent a, a video. What was it? Uh, a card with a picture of right. him and Neil Warnock to Neil's wife, which again was weird. But I'm glad we got that little tidbit before he left because uh, that's brilliant. The a crazy thing, and this is definitely quite cynical on Daniel Levy's part, is wherever Jose Mourinho goes, say what you want about him, he wins things. Yeah. Tottenham are in a cup final on Sunday. Yeah. And I think they're in a position where they haven't won a trophy in so long, which is fucking glorious, um, that if he was allowed to stay and got one over on Pep, got one over on Manchester City, yeah, uh, and actually won something, 
Levy was going to be put in a spot where they wouldn't be able to fire him. Well, and why wouldn't you want Jose on the bench for a cup final? Exactly. Like, that's someone who has experienced cup finals on every fucking level. He's been in Champions League finals. Like, that's the guy you want on the fucking bench. Like, this is exactly why you hired him. Despite you want to get, like... Just, why didn't you just wait till the end of the season? The end of the now, season. The end of the season would have been fine. Fire him at the end of the season. There are unconfirmed reports, um, and <clears throat> looks like it was done by a fake, tweeted out by a fake account mm-hmm. that Jose refused to take training because of the European Super League announcement. He failed to take training this morning. He refused to because of what Tottenham want to well, join this league. Right. I normally don't agree with Mourinho on a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's more of a meme to me, which is brilliant <laughs> nonetheless. I respect his achievements in the game. Um, but this, I would be fully behind him on if that were to... If that was the case. Proven true. Yeah. Yeah. I would be completely 100% behind him there. Okay, so I'm going to say the following things because I think there's wrongs on both sides. First and foremost, I think it was absolutely not the right hire by Tottenham in the in first, the first place. place. Correct, hundred percent. That one. Yes, Jose will put a governor on your Ferrari, right? He, that's what he's going to do. And yes, there's a lot of talented pieces at Tottenham. What have you won at Tottenham? These talented pieces, a fucking participation medal for coming in second at the Champions League. Well, this is the this is part 5 the finale, all or nothing. Guess what? Nothing. Still nothing. Still still fuck all. And for that in in that regards, Jose brought something to that building that that building I don't think could handle and I don't think that building will ever have is the desire and the want to be a champion. I don't fucking care. Perennial bottlers. How good Harry Kane and Son and Deli Alley and Lamella and Lucas Mora and that whole fucking team. I don't care. They haven't fucking won jack fucking shit. Mm -hmm. Mourinho was a fucking winner. He's a winner at multiple levels. And the game might have changed and the game might have passed him by and there's a lot of things wrong with him. But at the end of the day, Tottenham are a bunch of fucking losers that don't know how to deal with a winner in their building. Uh, and that is, that is for me, the ultimate problem I have within all of this is you hire someone to be... Exi- like, if he walks like a duck and talks like a duck, don't ask him not to be a fucking duck. Like, he's going to be who he fucking is. Yep. And he is offering something to your club that you don't fucking have. Now, I'm totally rooting for City now to win the League Cup. 100%. Oh, big time. I mean, I was anyway, but... Oh, if it was Jose, I just wanted him to win a trophy so you could be like, ha ha, Tottenham, there's your trophy. <laughs> you got one. <laughs> woo yeah, League Cup, yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny as hell. Yeah, it just... In- insanity. Insanity. Any any more thoughts on this before we move on to the uh, next one? I I was. I was trying to find the actual stats, but I can't find it right away uh, here. So I'll just basically describe it to you. Uh, it kind of ties into the European Super League thing a little mm-hmm. bit, um, which is funny about what you just said about Tottenham and perennial losers. Right. Between the other 11 clubs in that 12 have won 99 European trophies and domestic trophies, major honors. 99 major honors in the last 30 years, Tottenham contributed a grand total of fucking zero mm-hmm. to that total. Well, as as they say in Portugal, Sam. Like we say in Portugal, bread is bread and cheese is cheese. Eh, you know? And exactly. Jose got paid out a lot of fucking cheese. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay. Moving on to Manchester United, Burnley. Uh, Mason Greenwood, hello and welcome to the fucking Premier League. Again, bro. Yeah. you are I starting mean, he to shows score. Fla- he shows flashes here and there, Mason Greenwood. He's got... Uh, I think that was, what, his eighth goal of the season or something? Yeah. But he scores in, like, you know, brace here. Then he'll score, like, not in four. He won't score in four. Right. He'll score not in four games. <laughs> he won't score in four. What a weird way to say that. English is fun. <laughs> he, sco- he doesn't score. I almost said it again. He doesn't score in four games. And then he'll score, like, two games in a row. 
Mm -hmm. then he won't score in five, then he'll have a brace again. So he's very streaky, but that's also to be expected with him being so young. How much are Manchester United fans kicking themselves right now, seeing that they're only eight points out and City ain't playing all that great lately? No. Looking at that going, if we had only fucking kept it together, you know, if we don't fuck off a a surefire win against fucking Everton to tie them 3-3. Three, three. Right. Like, <laughs> it's just... That, that whole month of February, it was like 15 points left on the table that they could have had. Now they could have had, and they, and they just fucked it right off. Now, this is brilliant as well. Um, they didn't look good in this game against Burnley for no. large portions of the game. The third goal came in st- deep into stoppage time, like oh, 94th yeah. minute or some shit. Oh, yeah. But Gary Neville got the news of the European Super League during his commentary <laughs> and decided to go on a fucking rant and stopped commentating on the game. He was bloody fucking brilliant. Because really, too. there was nothing to talk about. And he said, Arsenal drew. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Arsenal drew Fulham earlier in the day. Manchester United at the time were drawing Burnley. Talked about City's exit in the FA Cup. Mm. Tottenham's performances. And he says, what the fuck Super League about? What's so super What's about so these? What's so super about the, these results here? Right. And, and it, not that super. Right. And this is during the commentary of the game. I mean, he went on a large rant on Sky Sports afterwards. <laughs> that one was brilliant, Which is fantastic. Too. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, YouTube it. It's fucking oh, great. It's so good. And uh, him and Roy Keane, obviously, Roy Keane was in a studio, former teammates. And he said, I don't really agree with Gary too often, but he's spot on here. Agree, <laughs> agree is the only word I can use. <laughs> Which was brilliant. and um, But, yeah, United are a strange old bird at the moment. Yeah. I, I don't know what to make of them. They've gone behind, I think, in something like 13 Premier League games this season. And they've come back and, and won or drawn and, and gotten points from, I think, 11 of those 13 most of them. games. Yeah, yeah, most of them. But you're still, it, it's almost like the Arsenal syndrome, except they have the players to finish off the chances. <laughs> right? Where they don't wake up until they go behind. They yeah. don't decide to play the game. They're like, all right, you know what? This is too easy. Let's make it difficult for ourselves. And then come storming back and we'll look like heroes. Well, it's like how you it's and like, I... It's like, what are you doing? It's like how you and I play golf. You know, put the water in play. Why? Because, well, you need that personal challenge. It's an obstacle <laughs> you need to... Uh, why, build, why do I hit it into the sand? It builds character. Personal challenge. That's yeah. what it's all about. It builds character. Oh, That's my why. God. Um, Burnley have worked themselves into trouble again somehow, huh? A uh, little bit, but I think they'll be safe because Fulham keeps fucking it off. West Brom doesn't have enough time, and and Sheffield obviously are already down. So okay, yeah, six. But I think they'll be safe. It's six points. Six points is going to be a lot to make up in mm-hmm. in the remaining games. Yep, um, sure is. All right, uh, <laughs> last match here. Uh, it was the last match. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Hard hitting commentary right say, here, that baby. That is high quality from you, Graham. Hot take. High quality. Here, hot take. <laughs> sure Don't, is. Hot take. <laughs> hot takes coming. Um, real, oh, real simple. Spicy. Real simple in this in this match. Um, all Liverpool first half. Mane finally scores. All all Leeds second half. Leeds finally breaks. Gets the goal right near the end of the match. I mean, that's pretty much cut and dry. That was it. Yep. Another Super League result here. Uh, uh, brilliant. <laughs> Uh, especially after Leeds came out wearing Earn It shirts. Yeah, love Ch- that. Champions League Earn It. It's it, you play for the fans on the back. Love it. Just trolling the fuck out of it. There, it's so good. Now Geckle said that this was photoshopped, and yeah. I, I didn't get a chance. I got here ten minutes before we started recording to peruse Twitter and try to find the image that was shared in our group yeah. from an official Leeds account. Uh, couldn't find it, so it, it appears as, as though Geckel is right that it was photoshopped. <laughs> but um, about them changing their schedule on their website to the Merseyside Reds mm-hmm. uh, was who they were playing today. The London Lily Whites. Yep, and then uh, something something Reds for Manchester. It wasn't Manchester Reds though. Yeah, it was something else. Yeah. But yeah, like the Northwest Reds <laughs> or some shit like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is great. I think that's brilliant. Oh my god! Just completely erasing the history of those clubs that want to join the Super League. Um, nobody wants to be in fourth place. Apparently, nobody. No, th- nobody this wants is, to be. In this happens what the last three, four years. We get this kind of yeah. four team struggle for fourth. Like you're expecting someone to hurry up and fucking make the move yeah, and do something. <laughs> now, I will say for Liverpool, you know, it's uh, I forget who they have next. It's not. 
terribly tough, but they have someone next. Then it's then it's Man U, but then after that it's Southampton, West Brom, Sheffield, and I forget the last one. But it's like four very very. I think it's Burnley is their final day. So. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I think Liverpool is going to backdoor their way into championship, into the Champions League. Unfortunately, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> it all it, it all depends. depends. It all depends on what their new little super fun happy time club is going to be, right? Yeah, the new rich people circle jerk. All right, we're going to gloss over the front part of this real quick because we got a lot of opinions about the second part. Uh, the FA Cup finals have been determined. There are a bunch of be- uh, greedy cunts trying to ruin football. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea won, Manchester City <laughs> nil, Leicester won, Southampton nil. No quad for City. No, uh, which is huge. Yeah. Very Super League of you to not win a quadruple. Yeah. Um, there <laughs> is... <laughs> Uh, that was actually a decent game, though. Chelsea um, played like uh, Tottenham, except Chelsea are good. Yeah. So they actually got the blocks in. They, they, they played like not... Jose used to manage them. They... <laughs> yeah. They didn't concede, obviously. They they got the blocks in. They were fully committed. They played on the break. Even Timo Werner got an assist. I know. Well, uh, but Zach well, Steffen because... sort of forced his hand into that assist, though. Well, that's also because Timo actually kicked it across the goal, not at the goal. If he would have kicked it at the goal, it would have gone wide. What? Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, Zach Steffen essentially laid out a red carpet and pointed, hey, Pass it here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he see, was see in the way fucking I'm no man's land. Go that land. way. Yeah, he was in no man's land. That was pitiful, uh, pitiful goalkeeping. Yeah. Um, uh, De Bruyne uh, took a knock. We'll have to see what that means for him. That's not good for City, as far as yes, Champions League uh, semis go. But also, who if they're even fucking, allowed to play? Right. Who fucking knows about that? Uh, and the other game, only one team played, and that was Leicester. Yeah, you know, it Southampton seemed... did not even fucking try. It uh, seemed so. It... <laughs> Southampton has a system, and and you and I, we watch all the matches, and there's kind of this thing you look for out of Southampton, which is this frenetic little triangle thing where it's like a forward and two midfielders or two midfielders and a defender, but there's these little triangle pockets where they do hardcore pressure on the ball, right, to make a a team kind of cough it up. And the game was just absent of that. They just kind of sat back and went, Okay, I hope we can beat Leicester. We don't want to fuck this off. Right. And by doing that, they they fucked it off. Yep. I mean, Leicester just played a very calm game and just went, we'll get our chance. We'll get our chance. And they did. And it was a very traditional Leicester chance. Yeah. Little drop of the shoulder from Jamie Vardy. (laughs) Uh, Great ball across. Eniacho should have finished first time. Instead, had it blocked in a last-ditch effort uh, from Fraser Forster. Mm -hmm. Got the ball back and neatly tucked it away. Um. We're both rooting for Leicester, right? To to win the FA Cup, hundred percent. Want to see want to see Jamie F and Vardy with a fucking trophy, hundred percent. Right? The only trophy I want City to win is the League Cup, and that's just because I hate Tottenham. Heard, but I want Leicester to win the FA Cup uh, now because of the Super League shit. <laughs> All right, and I hate Chelsea as well, but more now Super League shit. So right after the Champions League had announced that they were going to reconfigure how they do things and make On it more the eve of, a, of their announcement, a group stage kind of make it a little bit more inclusive for the opportunity of bigger clubs to play each other in the earlier stages of the tournament without without a detriment to them by doing it more of a World Cup style. So you could have quote unquote that real group of death and things right. like that uh, elimination of some of the play in stuff. So like where the fourth place team in England has to play their way in, they would just automatically be in the group stage. Right. And you would let the smaller countries play their play their elimination matches to get to the group stage. Yep. But there would be more games, but it would be you get more big big opportunities, right? And yeah. not have to wait to the elimination round to see it, which is what frankly everybody wants to see. So that happens. And then 12 clubs in basically three countries, uh, England, Italy, and Spain, decide we're going to make a little group and we're going to make a little Super League because apparently we're not rich enough. We need to be richer. Yeah. And somehow, J.P. Morgan Stanley is involved, who Ed Woodward used to work for. Uh-huh. And mm, wonder why that, how that just happened. Just for playing in the Super League, everyone, the, all 12 quote-unquote founding members are going to receive 400 million u.s dollars 3.5 billion euro is being split up between the 12 member clubs 
if they sign up to this idea. Now, and now those six clubs are mm-hmm. the big six from England. Yep. Uh, traditional big six: Manchester City, uh, Manchester United, uh, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. For some fucking reason, Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, you have to win things to be a big club, mate. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> dig. Uh, <laughs> they got the shovel. <laughs> yeah. The big three Spanish clubs: Barcelona, Real, and Atletico. Mm-hmm. Uh, Madrid. And then the big three in Italy, the old lady, uh, Juventus, um, uh, Inter, and AC. AC Milan. Which, ironically, the two teams in Milan have not been very good recently. No, they have. Not at all. Now, you... AC Milan was owned by like a shell corporation from China. Like yeah. there was no office. Yeah. They, somebody showed up to check out the offices and shit, and it was like a fucking empty room minus a chair and a lunch table and a microwave. Mm. Were the offices of the people that owned fucking AC Milan. Right. <laughs> but the check cleared, so who cares? <sighs> it, it, they want this, the way they are pitching this, <coughs> is a uh, midweek competition called the Super League that these 12 founding members cannot be relegated from. Mm-hmm. Arsenal, Tottenham, They, they wanted Manchester it to be United. 15 teams. Notice three did not join. Three Ajax, of them from Bayern Munich. From three and PSG. major leagues. Yep. Said no thank you. Bayern Munich. Well, Dortmund actually, but Ajax would be included in that conversation as a mm-hmm. historic storied club. Right. Um, as well. That was one that was kind of strange. They want to eventually grow it to 20 is their idea. Mm-hmm. But these 12 founding clubs uh, is, is, is the initial bit. And basically the reason is, is Arsenal aren't good enough anymore. Tottenham may or may not be good enough. Who knows? Manchester United may or may not be good enough. Who knows? Uh, Liverpool, as we've evidenced this season, may or may not be good enough. Who knows? To consistently make the Champions League. So they don't get that payout. Particularly in the reason why there's those six clubs all jumping at the opportunity to do this in England is because England has the most parity in its league. Absolutely. Well, AC AC and Inter, uh, Inter up until the last, what, three seasons, Mm -hmm. and still have been in Juventus' shadow. Um AC Milan hasn't been good for years either. Yeah. They they fall right in that Arsenal group. They used to be fucking good. Oh, and in Italy, Atalanta is taking over mm-hmm. as a club. Roma is taking over as a club. You know, these, they, these in Italy, there's a ton of parity. Now, they don't have the money as far as market money goes that England does because well, England well, is worldwide. They actually got a, a fantastic uh, TV deal, but... It was with ESPN, so they shoved everything behind a paywall, and you can only stream it. Right. So yeah. we don't get to see it like we do with NBC. Right. In right. this country. Well, not that, of course. But, fucking... but also by... It also pisses me the fuck off. Where... The rich getting richer, Mel. Yeah, but... It's Walt Disney himself just drawing himself dollar bills in the U.S. government going, ooh, that looks <laughs> legit. Here's another billion. But he, he is... I mean, um, I don't know why... <laughs> and, and I don't see, know why Mickey sounded like the Pillsbury Doughboy there, NBC, but I was going NBC for Mickey Sports Mouse. Sports moving everything to Peacock going next season only a handful of games will be on regular tv right but we'll talk about them as they become cunts right (laughs) originally they paid a billion dollars to be all right um to be decent people but give us football in england you have to take lester seriously now how does lester build itself financially to survive once people like vardy are gone like how do they survive like i still i think jamie vardy is going to be the Betty White slash Keith Richards of football. He's just going to be fifty out there, still scoring goals. Be like, still playing on the counter. Be like, be like, okay, he's fifty five, but he gives us seven goals this season. So yeah, we'll use him off the bench that, for every you know what five That's, minutes every match. It'd be King Kazu in uh, in Japan, fifty two yep. years old, yeah, <laughs> exactly, still scoring goals. <laughs> That's the other thing, by the way, I forgot to mention about wanting Leicester to win the FA Cup. Is I've heard. Uh, mm-hmm. from a fairly reliable source, that there are a lot of pubs in Leicester that need someone to come around and spend money. And if Jamie Vardy gets his hands on another fucking trophy, he will single-handedly save the pub industry in Leicester. <laughs> Skittles and vodka and Red Bull for oh, everybody. <laughs> and the local CVS that's about to go out of business. <laughs> but all the Skittles and take them with him on the pub call. But, but Leicester <laughs> has to be taken seriously. Wolverhampton finished seventh the last two the last two prior seasons. They are a big city. They are actually a, they 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 have the right financial structure to do it. Everton, they're also in bed with George Mendes. Everton <laughs> has Everton has 
a good financial backing and is about to build a new fucking stadium. Like, these are things you'd like the big six needs to take fucking seriously. West Ham, if they can get out of their own way, is a major fucking club. If they if the Dildo brothers don't fuck it up, suddenly four spots for fucking Champions League are dominated by ten fucking teams. And Stan Kroenke and his Mm, I'm only going to spend a little bit of money on you to get by when your stadium is fucking paid for and you're not carrying any debt. Like you guys are going to get passed by. You're going to get passed by. Mm-hmm. And this super league is your, is his way of just going, well, I can still getting, keep getting paid with the mediocre product that I have and mm-hmm. not have to worry about champions league. Cause it won't matter. Cause I created my own league where I'm super hundred percent. Absolutely. It's it's these 12 clubs are solidifying their position. There used to be years ago when they revamped the Champions League before, uh, when it was the European Cup and then made it the Champions League. It was called the G8 Summit, I believe. Mm. That included Bayern. Um, but it was minus Tottenham, the big five in England, of Arsenal, Chelsea, mm-hmm. Liverpool, United, and um, I can't remember who. I don't think City was involved at that sort point. Sort of been your four. So it was the big four. And then Barca, Real Madrid, Real. Barca, uh, Inter, Juve, AC. Uh, I think Roma may have been involved. Bayern, Dortmund, and Ajax. Yeah. And they were the G8 Summit, which right. was the most rich and powerful clubs in Europe. Right. Um, but it just, to create a closed league is completely ruining the sporting integrity of the competition, the various competitions, to create a league that you cannot get relegated from, right? In the middle of a hundred and twenty years of promotion and relegation history and tradition of qualifying for tournaments based on your league position in your domestic league, is absolutely fucking atrocious. Dare I say, how very American of them. Oh, shocker. Fuck ton of American owners are behind this. And the founding members, oh, founding fathers. Big yeah. surprise. You think this language is any different? It, it's it's completely. And then the, the other thing is the other teams that aren't American owned, mm-hmm. it's the old guard evil empire of European football. Yeah. Which the G8 people, right? So it's Real, Barca, AC Milan, Inter, Juve. Uh, with their family, maybe tying them with the mom, who knows, allegedly. Uh, and then, surprisingly, they haven't gotten in Bayern Munich yet, but in Germany, for some sort of, you know, take it at face value, f- every club must be 51% fan-owned. Yeah. And there is a voting member of the f- Supporters Trust on every board. Mm-hmm. So, take that what you will. Uh, uh, it's- actually, hey, Sam, go figure. For once... Germany and France agreed on fucking something. They yeah. both went, uh, no, we'll pass. <laughs> now, I don't know how They're genuine... Not ones that normally work together. I don't know how genuine PSG's refusal was mm-hmm. because the owners of PSG also own the BN Sports Network mm-hmm. that just wrote a fat check three months ago to have the television rights for the Champions League across most of the world. Hey, whatever, uh, whatever not keeps here in the U.S. Though. Whatever keeps you honest. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Ke- you know what? Hey, if the almighty dollar is what drives you, well, then there you go. The almighty dollar just drove them. Yeah. Well, but that that's the problem, right? What's the the picture I shared online? Football is created by the by the poor, stolen by the rich. Yeah. And it's happening yet again. These clubs ask their players to take a pay cut during a pandemic, and they cited the pandemic in their announcement. Mm-hmm. They, they they asked the players to take a wage cut so they didn't have to lay anybody off. Eight weeks later. Still laid people still off. Still laid people off after the players agreed to take a wage cut. Yeah. They still get the biggest chunk of the television money. They are still competing in European competition and taking that TV money. They are still getting richer and richer and richer and richer while everybody else is getting poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. The, they, you know, art often imitates life. Right, mm-hmm. it also goes true with sport, the sporting world, mm-hmm. and a lot of us use art and sports to escape. And we've been getting fucked in our daily lives for the last, I don't know, twenty years by politicians, by everybody. But and now you know what the football's finally catching up. Yeah, sports now going to fuck you over too. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's atrocious. There should be the, what as a, as a competitor. 
This is where, like, even in our business, in a booze yeah. business, the nerds, the business people, have infiltrated the storytelling, the sitting around a campfire and opening a bottle of whiskey and talking shit. They, they've fucked it with spreadsheets and analysis mm -hmm. and shit, right? If the you grow your the imprint on the shelf by two more bottles, it is shown that you're going to sell ten times more. No shit, motherfucker, because there's more of your product on the shelf. Of course it's going to sell more. Right. The, <laughs> my, exactly. The business people, the nerds, have now infiltrated sports. There is not a single competitor on the planet that wants to just be handed a place in a competition that they didn't earn. Not a single fucking person. Yeah. I guarantee it. And you can see it online in the uproar. You can see it in the in maybe what Jose did. Mm -hmm. Again, no, unconfirmed. No don't know if it's true. Nobody wants this to happen, except for the clubs that are the clubs are doing except it. Except for the business oh, people that are in I charge of the clubs. I love the attitude they're trying to throw out there. Well, we're going to give to the pyramid of football. You're trying to tell me trickle down. You're trying to fuck off. And again, no, it's not. No, again, it's not. I, no, it's I not. talked to Smokey about this. Trickle down in theory, great financial policy. Yeah. Fantastic economic plan. Problem, Problem is, is, you don't fucking enforce it. Yeah. So nobody actually trickles anything fucking down. Yeah, they, just they put build it in a their dam. Fucking yeah, they build a dam uh, that di directs the trickle into their so, pocket. <laughs> so here's here's the big question, and and we'll wrap it up with this: is what does the governing bodies do? Right? Because on Tuesday, the fourteen teams in England meet to discuss what to do with the six of you. Find them, dock them points, relegate them, yeah. fucking stamp it, hurt, out. hurt them, hurt them, absolutely, like, kick them in the fucking balls and poke them in the eyes. FIFA has threatened to not let players who play in the Super League play in the World Cup, but we all know if Kroenke shows up with a crisp twenty dollar bill, FIFA will fold like a fucking cheap chair. Well, absolutely, you get the Fenway Sports Group to write the contract. You give Stan with a stack of hundreds hanging out the front of his pants, and mm -hmm. Daniel Levy over there making a sandwich, and. <laughs> FIFA will yep. do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. It's yeah. been proven, and they haven't exactly cleaned up their fucking act yet. You wonder also then with UEFA. So the, the, the current rumor is, is that UEFA may act immediately, kick both Manchester United and... And, uh, and Arsenal out of the Europa League. And then kick Chelsea and Real Madrid and uh, City out, out of, of the, the Champions, Champions League. League. Now, that actually would be funny on a lot of levels. Just because PSG wants so badly... To win the Champions League <laughs> for the first time in their history. Yeah. And then they wouldn't actually win it. It would just be given to them. <laughs> and that is fucking funny. Yeah. And I like that. Well, but, and, and for City, it would be they also so desperately want to win the Champions League that they're just told, nah, fuck you. You're kicked out. You yeah. don't get it. Yep. That's what you get for trying to be an exclusivity asshole. You know what I mean? That football's supposed to be inclusive. Football's supposed to be about the fans. And Gary Neville, in his rant, said it best, and I completely fucking agree with him. Manchester United, Liverpool, and Arsenal, in particular, those three clubs, should be absolutely fucking ashamed of themselves. There are over a hundred years of history, tradition, and community ties that go along with those clubs. All three clubs founded by workers in those towns. Yeah, in those areas, local lads that then built these clubs up to be what they are, and they're absolutely shitting on their entire history and everything that us as supporters stand for, and it's fucking atrocious. If you haven't figured it out yet, we're fucking anti-Super League on the DU Football Show. Hey, Super League, don't be a cunt. Fuck off. It's time to tell you what little we know it is prediction time. Uh, we all missed. Even the fucking bird. The bird missed, too. Wow. You missed. I missed. Pat missed. You know who else missed? What? The 12 greedy cunts trying to form a Super League. They missed the mark. <laughs> Heard. Very good. All right, uh. so you you suck. Um, you're <laughs> at now negative uh, 1365. Yeah. Working towards that Mount 2000, aren't we? <laughs> you're going to bet another 200 this week on something really fucking crazy, aren't you? Maybe. Maybe? All right, what do you got for us? All right, so uh, my cup of losers just says, fuck the European Super League. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty direct. Don't care about my bet. Um, so this... Week, I'm going to do a little bit more of the uh, DU betting, mm -hmm. and I am putting 200 on it. Okay. It'll be Arsenal to beat Everton on Friday. Okay. Then I have Villa to beat West Brom, 
And then just as a little uh, little kicker, uh huh, I've got Jamie Vardy to score <laughs> against okay. Palace. Just for uh, fun. In huh? a parlay plus five seventy nine, uh, which two hundred dollars would turn me back a quick one thousand one hundred and fifty eight dollars. And you'd still be two hundred in the hole. Yep. Heard. Very but good. I'd be two hundred in the hole, which would be more than you had. Ah, very good. Well, that depends on how I do on my bets. Well, my bet's not going to pay out that much, so I'm just going to try to calmly take away a little bit of my take away a little bit of my bet at a time here. So, uh, <clears throat> before we bring on uh, Pat, I'll go ahead and uh, say my little uh, couple losers. You don't have to take a picture here, Mel. It's just um, uh, you can't score on Ful- Fulham, but you can catch uh, malaria instead. Is what my, uh, is what mine says for the cup of losers. Thanks. Um, you can't score on Fulham, but you've allowed malaria to score on you. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and and even if Lacazette was the person who had scored that goal at the end, it wouldn't have mattered because it was extra time. You got to score in, in in regular time. I don't. I hate oh. that. Yeah. So let's get on to our next one. And now it's time for our degenerate gambling friend Pat's pick of the week. Pat, Everton was winning for you until their two defenders decided to head a ball off of another one and <laughs> put it right on Harry Kane's foot in the middle of the box, which equals a goal. <laughs> right? I mean, you can't be real. I can't be upset about that one because I had the right side on it. You know what I mean? Like, we were kind of talking on Friday. Like, yeah. uh, that was a good pick by me. But yeah. uh, Everton it, was the better side. Happen. You should have won that one. Yeah. Everton was better. I, I know. Yeah, they, they were clearly the better side. It just uh, it just didn't go that way for you, unfortunately. So, what do you got for us this week, bud? Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take two games. I'm gonna take a during the week and then a later week game. So uh, mm-hmm. the first one, I'm just looking to try and to win something because I'm down two thousand seventy five dollars. <laughs> so I'm don't worry, don't worry, Graham's catch, <laughs> don't worry, Graham's <laughs> catching up to you. <laughs> Well, you know, this is kind of my, like, goal now. It's like, as long as I can uh, end the, the season with uh, owing less than Graham, I think I'm doing all right. So. That is that is a victory. That is definitely a victory. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking all right, so I'm, I'm going to take Tottenham over Southampton at minus 130. I'll risk 260 to win 200. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Um, and then I'm going to gamble a little bit more on uh, Friday's game, which I am calling the Sam Derby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Friday, Arsenal and Everton play. I'm sure you've already talked about it. Um, and you know, maybe somebody can explain this to me because Everton to win is plus 325. And I don't know. That just looks too good not to take. So I'm going to risk the 200 that I have already won during the week um, to hopefully win 650. That's- that's Very presumptuous, nice. isn't it? The reason behind that is... Is Everton is, are not as good as Arsenal are. Well, um, Everton... Not, not their record. Every, yeah, thank you. Thank you very uh, much. Pound for pound, we're a better team. So um, the odds reflect that. Now, we will fuck it off, guaranteed, especially since I bet them. Everton <laughs> Everton typically doesn't play well at the Emirates. That's, that's probably why the odds are so high. Is Everton's beaten... Arsenal before, but it's typically at Goodison, and they normally, it's a loss or a draw, most times a loss when they go to the Emirates and play at Arsenal. So that's why your odds are so good. But I'll tell you what, I'm not against that bet. I I fancy uh, Everton to have a good performance against Arsenal, and would not be surprised if uh, Everton win win the match, because the matchups for Everton-Arsenal... Arsenal does not line up very good against Everton's defense, and that was very easy to see in the first matchup as well. Absolutely, and just to prove the point of us not being fucking super, we're going to lose 2-0. Two, two no. Yeah, well, very good. Uh, hey, I'll take it because uh, I'll, uh, that'll put me $800 on the week, so <laughs> that's, that's all I'm trying to do, get, get, get down. <laughs> get down from where I'm at. So, uh, Mel, did you want to give Pat a little shout out for uh, his movie recommendation? Oh yeah, Promising Young Woman. Uh, yeah, yeah, great I mean, movie. I watched it three times in two days. It was, I, I mean, I've, one of the I've best movies this year. I've watched it twice now. Definitely rooting for it uh, at the Oscars because we've been Sam and I've been watching all the other Oscar movies, and so uh-huh. far, Promising Young Woman is by far the best. Hey, how do we get uh, yeah. to the guild so we can get the movies? Yeah, I, that's what we got to do. Yeah, get into the guild, get the movies free. Yeah. We do videos for the Patreon, which you can easily find at www.patreon.com backslash do football show. Uh, and sign well, up to hey, one of the top I'll... two tiers, and you'll get those videos. Very <laughs> be good. Be awesome. 
So, I'll throw a little uh, uh, thing for a recommendation. Uh, I watched Ted Lasso this week. Uh, Friday and Saturday is all it took me to get 10 episodes in. It's great, And holy it? crap. Oh, it's one of my favorite new shows. I mean, absolutely. I don't know why I was sleeping on it for what? I guess it's been out for probably a year now or something, yeah. you know? Because it's not supposed to be good. It's based on a commercial. No right. one had any expectations yeah. on it. Do you know what they should have done is start every episode with that based on a commercial. <laughs> you know, based on based on a true story. I mean, when we talk about based on commercials, remember there was a Geico commercial of the caveman that got turned into a fucking <laughs> oh, sitcom. Jesus. Why'd you have to remind us of that? <laughs> That's what we're all <laughs> expecting Ted Lasso to be, and then it ends up being fucking fantastic. You know what I well, want? Done. I want. Uh, a scoop there it is movie <laughs> yes okay sprinkles sprinkles chocolata chocolata <laughs> chocolate you know when i go up and i feed uh kitty the chicken and her uh her court uh whenever i throw the mealworms in the air i do go sprinkles uh, have right. you seen the meme floating around of the woman and uh, man in bed, and he's facing away from her? Yes. And her thought bubble is, I wonder what he's thinking. <laughs> or, or I bet he's thinking about other women. That's what it is. And his thought bubble is, French vanilla, <laughs> Rocky, Rocky Road. Road. <laughs> Cookie dough, no, scoop. There, there it is. is. <laughs> All righty, Pat. We'll, uh, we'll talk funny. to you next week, brother. All right. Have a good week, guys. All, All right, right man. We'll see ya. See ya. All right. So. I missed and I pushed because Laka didn't score and well Abba got malaria, so I'm now down eight hundred and twenty dollars. Wait till the next fucking excuse. What, what? But it has been documented in Vegas when star players get sick from a mosquito bite. I am a staggering forty-five, six and seven. Big Sam's lock of the week. Twenty-three point five percent of the time, Samuel Graham. It works 100% Is the of percentage the time. still that high? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it is. It is. So, <clears throat> who do you have getting the plague this week? Very simple. <laughs> I'm going to take, because I think they're definitely prone to do this, and they're prone to do this against this club. I'm going to take Newcastle to score in the first half against Liverpool at plus 250. Wow. Newcastle loves to go up on Liverpool, and then they love to fuck it off. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to take the the first half goal for our fucking Newcastle. A goal in the first half. Right. It just has to be a goal. I it doesn't even have to be the first goal. Just a goal in the first half. Now, what, what I right? see is is they score in the first 15 minutes, and then Liverpool scores, scores two before the end of the first half. Right. And they're down. But, but definitely a Newcastle goal. All right. So that was a pretty good segment. But we give you more. We give you. Kitty the chicken. So, Kitty missed her bet, and she sits at 16 and 17. So, this week I gave Kitty Leeds hosting Man United. Now, Kitty showed me a video of her judging a dance off between Justin Timberlake and Mel B of the Spice Girls. Ah, Sporty Spice. And she enjoyed all their moves and just couldn't pick a winner. And seeing that Justin loves Man U and Mel B loves Leeds, well, I guess Kitty can't pick a winner here either and is going with a draw. Mmm, okay, so in the Battle of the Roses, a draw from Kitty, huh? Interesting. I don't think that's a bad bet. I don't either. Oh. To be I think it's a. I think it's a pretty damn good bet. And Kitty also would like me to remind everybody to please always gamble legally and responsibly. All right. So no fantasy because uh, it's playing the midweek games as well. Yeah, it's only halfway done, so right. I really don't have much for you. We will go through all of that. Next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have two whole weeks of stuff two to go through. Two fantasy stuff to go so over. you will need to learn how to consolidate that into something interesting. Not a chance. Heard. Uh, maybe take a, a little detour on the way to work oh, as you, you listen to us next week. You are a long-winded individual, <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up, boys and girls. Uh, Sammy, any parting words? I have one question for everybody. Okay. Who in world football do you think is most likely to get the plague? I'm going to piggyback on my joke from the last segment. Oh, I would say probably Arsenal. No, particular person. Oh, who? Uh, on their own? Yes. The rate he's going, Alba. 
<laughs> uh, I was going to go with Marcelo Bielsa. Yes. Because he's just walking around back alleys talking to himself. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't just... realize where he is, then gets bit by a rat. Probably <laughs> randomly licks a wall, <laughs> you know. <laughs> just, you re- remember that, that, um, the, um, the, no, the camera. No, more, more, <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the camera, the door camera, the, yeah, the yeah. ring, ring doorbell. Uh-huh. There was a guy just licking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that reminds me That is of. Bielsa. Yeah. <laughs> Just randomly walking around licking door cameras. Do you remember <laughs> the start of Happy Gilmore? I want to kiss you all oh, yes, over. Yes, I do. <laughs> over and again. <laughs> yep, licking it. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Uh, fuck the Super League. All right. Anything else? Nope. No well wishes? Oh. Yeah, see? I'm better than you. Go you ahead. You are. Uh... <laughs> Isolate that. He said I'm better than him. He person agreed. that listens to us feel better. Yeah, and couple other people. person that listens to us feel better. Yep. You know who you are. Yep. We're thinking of you. Well, both of you. Um, please get well soon and know that we love you very, very much. And we, we care deeply for both of you and we hope you're okay. 100%. Absolutely. We appreciate your, your love and support. And we are here for you all as well. Uh, with thoughts, prayers, good vibes, and good juju all the way around. Absolutely. So that's going to wrap it up, boys and girls. Uh, Next up is injury time, where we're going to preview the midweek makeup games and the weekend's action and probably shit all over the Super League some more. We talk about Iberian, the Ibs, our favorite Scottish team, and we talk about the beers that we've been drinking. And you can check that out how, Sam? Uh, Once again, you can check it out via www.patreon.com backslash dfootballshow. Uh, And signing up to one of the top two tiers will get you both soundcheck, our pre-show show, and Injury Time, our post-show show. show. Uh, and also, the top tier gets you those videos that I spoke about, which hopefully will get us into the Screen Actors Guild. Excellent. Um, Mel, I blame myself. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't give him the normal line. How would one find that, Sam? And, and so he stumbled through that page because yeah, that wasn't your best effort. But I'm going to blame me. <laughs> Jesus it, it just wasn't a good pass. You know what? I'm, I'm you sorry, know what, Sam. Houston, you should be a better host. I really should be. Work on that. Until next week, everybody. No, I'm not saying anything this time. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Put you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Sam Houston? Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right AA, the fucking Gooner Graham. Stuff of a lord. Look straight in shorts. Sam Grammy!